Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, we are talking about upcoming days of activities everywhere for from campaign nonviolence and from all sorts of organizations and individuals who want peace in the world. Our guest uh, returning to the program is Rivera Sun. She is an author, an activist, author of numerous wonderful books, novels, including the Dandelion Insurrection, the award-winning Ari Ara series. She is the editor of Nonviolence News, the program coordinator of Campaign Nonviolence. Her articles are syndicated by Peace Voice and published in hundreds of journals nationwide and beyond nationwide, I think. Rivera Sun serves on the advisory board of World Beyond War and the board of the Backbone Campaign. Her website is riverasun.com. Rivera, welcome back to Talk World Radio. Thanks for having me back, David. It's good to be here. Uh, glad to have you. Glad you're still doing everything you're doing. Uh, so we're planning ahead here. We're letting people know of what's coming up uh, so they can be part of it. What and when uh, is Campaign Nonviolence Action Days? Yeah, so Campaign Nonviolence is a long-term movement to build a culture of peace and active nonviolence, free from war, poverty, racism, and environmental destruction. We've been organizing for 11 years, and last year was our biggest year yet. We had 5,000 actions and events with over 60,000 people participating. This happens annually between September 21st, which is the International Day of Peace, and October 2nd, which is the International Day of Nonviolence. And uh, people around the world join in and across the United States as well. So it's not just in the United States. Uh, some of these thousands of actions are elsewhere. Yes, absolutely. So we have people who join in from Australia, from the UK, also places like Sierra Leone, um, uh, Nib Nibibia, uh, Nigeria, and uh, actually a whole host of African countries. I don't know, they must be talking to one another and uh, inviting each other to participate because they hold large demonstrations for peace. They do massive teach-ins on uh, nonviolence and ending various different forms of nonviolence. It's really remarkable what they're organizing uh, across many nation states in Africa. Can people see reports and videos from years gone by or where do people go for information? Yeah, absolutely. If they just Google campaign non nonviolence.org, they'll uh, pull up our website and we have all of our previous actions and events and action reports kind of listed on the action days page. So it's pretty easy to find. Um, and you'll see everything on there from direct actions to stop uh, weapons shipments and, uh, you know, teach-ins in schools on Cesar Chavez or on another one of our peace heroes. So it's a pretty broad campaign and it really highlights in wonderful ways just how diverse and versatile the tools of nonviolent action are for building the, a, a nonviolent culture. So it's so it's any type of event or action that people want to do that's that's pro nonviolence from educational to activist. Absolutely. The whole spectrum. And in fact, one of the things that we do each year is we issue specific calls to action and we invite people to uh, come up with their own action ideas. So we're very welcoming in that way. Uh, the only qualifier is it's got to be a nonviolent action for a nonviolent cause. Um, and our calls to action this year are really designed to help people explore and unpack the, the amazing toolbox of kinds of actions that we have for making change in our world. For example, on the International Day of Peace, we ask people to hold uh, protests or demonstrations or rallies or candlelight vigils. On the International Day of Nonviolence, we ask people to hold teach-ins on nonviolence to honor the fact that it's Mahatma Gandhi's birthday. We also invite people to take action on, the, on some specific issues, including ending violence and training to interrupt violence and harassment, the kind of work that violence prevention teams do in cities all across the, the country and in hot conflict zones around the world. 
We ask people to do things like show up for your local strike, help your friends donate to support their strike campaign, their strike uh, fund. Uh, so show solidarity in the form of mutual aid because that's how we end poverty, and not just with charity, but with solidarity. We're asking people to take action uh, in a variety of ways around environmental justice. Uh, there are ways in our toolkit that you can work with kids, do hold listening circles, make art, um, hold a march for peace and planet. But you can also organize older uh, youths or anyone up the age spectrum to go demonstrate at a bank and try to move our money out of fossil fuels and weapons. And then we also ask people to take action for racial justice and the particular call um, this year is twofold. One is to hold a healing circle in your community around a racial justice issue that's been uh, on people's hearts and minds. Israel-Palestine, uh, treatment of Asian Americans, uh, Black Americans, migrant issues. There's just so much to choose from. And in addition to that, uh, to connect to our other call of action and train to interrupt harassment when you see it, because these are forms of violence that we'd like to see ended in our world. So it's so it's going after violence on the largest scale, war, and also down to the smallest scale, uh, plus racial discrimination, racial injustice uh, is included as what you're opposing. Absolutely. You know, we started to notice that when we looked at our amazing social justice movements in all of the categories for racial justice, environmental justice, economic justice, every single campaign from the local level up to the national was trying to transform another form of structural or systemic violence, right? We're trying to end mass incarceration. We're trying to demilitarize. We're trying to get the police to stop using uh, violent repression of protesters or to stop murdering people in the street. Uh, we want to see things like people safe from evictions and children having enough food, all of which are forms of structural violence. So in that way, our issues are connected. They share a common theme. And interestingly enough, our solutions are often interconnected as well. And this can be uh, literal in terms of uh, structural or policy shifts that we want to see that work on multiple fronts of issues, but it can also be big and broad in how we think about it. Um, because when we look at what, what might happen if every one of these social issue campaigns succeeds in their goals, what kind of a world would we live in then? Well, to me, this is a world that has implemented structural or systemic nonviolent solutions at every level of society that instead of causing as much harm as we can get away with, we're doing as much healing, nourishing and supporting as we can possibly imagine. And that's the big broad vision of campaign nonviolence is that nonviolence gives us a means and an ends. It gives us where we're going and what kind of world we want to live in and the tools to get there. Sounds terrific to me. We are speaking with Rivera Sun about campaign nonviolence action days, and the website is campaignnonviolence.org. And I guess you can go and see if there's already an event happening near you between the International Day of Peace, September 21st, and the Day of Nonviolence, October 2nd. Uh, and if there isn't, you can create one and ask them to include it, right? Some of the events are probably online as well as real world so that people could take part anywhere. Is that right? Absolutely. So, you know, we welcome all sorts of events and it could be uh, something that you're ho holding in your house, a conversation with friends. It could be a, um, a bold, colorful, creative, direct action to change a, something like the climate crisis. Um, it could be in person like those, or it can also be online. So you could do a teach in with your friends on Zoom on a nonviolence topic. You could hold a vigil for a ceasefire with your far flung friends and family uh, online. Uh, you could do a uh, occupy a social media channel with a live stream and talk about current issues and the solutions to them. So there are many ways to join in and we do uh, welcome your ideas. And if you are stuck on ideas, you will find a great toolkit, which probably has something like 40 different types of actions uh, to spark your, your creativity in that regards. I'm uh, 
I, I especially love this in a period in the United States when people are obsessed with a presidential election in which there isn't any candidate uh, who has any chance of winning, who uh, cares about nonviolence <laughs> in any way. Uh, and, and, and so I think it will be wonderful for people to talk about something else for a minute, um, if, if that's really possible. I don't know. I guess we'll see. <laughs> we will. Well, you know, when we think about peace and the work to build a culture of peace, to abolish war like World Beyond War does, um, we need things like direct actions to shut down military bases all over the world, but we also need to transform our culture. And I think in this day and age, when we see a war criminal getting a standing ovation in Congress, we, re we have to recognize that we need to go shore up the base of every single citizen in our country and make sure that they are very clear that peace is, a, is more than just a, a, a dream. It's a pragmatic possibility for all of us, and we can be part of the peace movement. And in this context, you know, the actions that people do to put up yard signs, to put up peace poles, to uh, do peace art with young people in schools, to hold a march uh, with young people for peace, they take on an added importance. They're not um, inconsequential in the great big struggle that we're in to stop these terrible wars that we, we see all over the world. And if you're a US citizen listening, uh, so often are part of fomenting and paying for. Absolutely. Um, I, I think it's wonderful that you do, that you organize this as days of action everywhere, because I think people, a lot of times, people, including media outlets, uh, pay more attention to something local if it's part of something national or global. Um, do you find that to be the case? Does it help to build local movements for them to do something that's part of a bigger day or days of action? I think the benefit flows both ways. Uh, on the one hand, when we're organizing locally, it is really um, empowering to feel a sense of solidarity. And with campaign nonviolence action days, especially to know that you're part of something that maybe has 5,000 actions and events happening all over the world, but also that relates, right? If you're an activist like me, you go to your climate justice march, you show up for your peace uh, rally, you then go to your uh, housing justice campaign rally, uh, and you're very busy. So there's something really nice about synchronizing our watches and feeling like on in this time period, we are all standing together. We can sense how it relates, we can talk about the connection to others, and we can feel that sense of solidarity. On the converse, one of the most beautiful things that I've seen over the years with campaign nonviolence is that the very best frontline ideas, the things happening on the ground in this community and that community, we can help pick them up and help people see them and popularize them and know that they too could do something like that in their community. For example, there's a great group called Peace Week Arkansas and every year they get thousands of school children in the K through 12 age to submit peace art and peace essays to their contest. And then on International Day of Peace, they go to the Capitol building in Little Rock and they plaster the rotunda with these peace displays. So if you're a legislator in Arkansas, you can't get in the building that day without encountering a visible sign of peace from thousands of school children. Well, we started talking about this story because it's just so amazing. And it turned out that people in our Nonviolent Cities project, which we also work on uh, year round, loved that idea. And so Nonviolent Seifer, Delaware, held a peace art uh, campaign with a local library that got the mayor and the city council member to go to. Then Nonviolent Morro Bay in California started working with peace art and these ideas. Um, so that's just one one of the examples uh, that we like to show about how, you know, we need to hear the ideas that are coming from the ground. We need to know things like this incredible project in Hawaii where they put up, uh, they create a zone of peace in a housing project. And every year they have rallies and marches to affirm that this low-income housing project is committed to peace and nonviolence. 
they do trainings, they do teach-ins, they have a march with the youngest ones and the, the teens leading it. Um, this is an incredible thing that other communities could learn from. At Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. could learn from uh, <laughs> every, that would be a great uh, zone of peace. Um, the uh, the idea that a lot of people were excited about some weeks back was, of course, encampments for peace, encampments against genocide in Gaza in particular, uh, many of which shut down for summer because these were university based uh, is anyone picking up on that idea? Do you know of any plans to restart encampments in September that would be part of this? Mm, I love that idea. I'd love to see that be part of the Campaign on Violence Action Days and ties in really nicely with our calls to take action for ceasefires. Um, and I think, you know, even if it's a temporary encampment or a symbolic encampment or a flash encampment, uh, it's a great moment to re-up the pressure on the universities to divest. Uh, that also connects to our call to action to divest from war and fossil fuels. Um, so yeah, that would be uh, incredible. One one of the events, you know, as a, as an advisory board member of us here at World Beyond War, where we benefit from your advice all the time, is uh, is our annual conference, which we've often had around the International Day of Peace, and this year are again having September twentieth to twenty second. Um, so that will be will be included as as one of the thousands of actions uh, which people can take part in in the real world if they're in Washington D.C., Bogota, Colombia, Wanfred, Germany, or Sydney, Australia, but also online anywhere. We're trying to do an event that's in person in four different places uh, around the world, but the whole thing online for everybody everywhere. Um, so that'll be well, one of the 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 no war conference on resisting u.s militarism is brilliantly designed that way i mean it's really taking that hybrid format to the next level but it's so appropriate for this topic because the conference is all about illuminating to people and, and getting us to really see the spider web tentacles of the u.s empire in terms of the 900 military bases that we have all over the world and so each one of these communities is a location that uh, has these military bases uh, from the U.S. in them. So there's a sense of this isn't an abstract uh, conversation. It's not just a little map with dots on it. You're going to meet and talk with people who live in these communities in Australia and Bogota and elsewhere, Germany. Um, and so to really see that this is the the US military empire you know has a direct impact on our our fellow human beings uh so it's a brilliantly designed conference i've been to many world beyond war conferences before and i've learned so much there's some of the best um the best uses of one's time if you want to really understand the issues and not just the problems but also the people who are working for the solutions and i think that's a really good balance that's been struck over the years at Campaign Nonviolence, we are always thrilled by the work that World Beyond War does. It really exemplifies so much of the kind of potential and vision of nonviolent transformation that we are uh, always trying to encourage others to embody as well. Very good of you to say so. And and uh, people can, can sign up for that one at worldbeyondwar.org, but also I assume find it along with thousands of other actions uh, at campaignnonviolence.org. Uh, and yeah, it'll be a conference, people talking, but it'll be talking about the activism that has shut down military bases, prevented the construction of military bases, limited the size of new military bases, uh, et cetera. Um, so hopefully it will be inspiring and encouraging uh, for people who don't think uh, the United States needs a military base empire in every corner of the globe and could do something more worthwhile if it chose. Um, the, uh, we were talking earlier about how there are actions that require risk and daring and, the, and others that are more family friendly. Um, how, how do you see the actions on this list of activities uh, for late September uh, fitting in? What's the, what's the strategy to, to grow the movement, but to get things done? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think 
you know, if we want to make a culture of active nonviolence, right, and imagine entire societies of people for whom taking direct action, participating in a boycott or a strike, this isn't an unusual thing to their lives. Uh, if we want to get to that level as a widespread populace, then we need to create uh, places where new people can come into the movement, where they can learn the story of Cesar Chavez and the United Farm Workers uh, campaign as they're doing in Colorado during Action Days, or participate in their very first march as they're doing in Arkansas when they're going to have a children's march uh, at the elementary school for peace. Um, you know, these are the kinds of everyday activities that help us encounter the power of nonviolent action, see how our issues tie and link together, and help prepare our hearts and minds for being part of a world that's going through an incredible amount of change, and that some of us hope will be done uh, through nonviolent struggle, not through uh, violence or collapse. Uh, you know, when I was a school child, I had this incredible experience, which was that our, our chorus teacher decided that she would teach us the South African anti-apartheid songs. We were little, we were like th third, fourth graders, you know, we didn't really kind of get the context of what we were singing, not until one day, all grown up, I'm watching a documentary on the South Ar African uh, apartheid, anti-apartheid struggle, and the song comes on. And all of a sudden, it all clicks. And I recognize that that early introduction to solidarity with movements around the world helped me grow up to be the kind of person who wants to be in active solidarity. So the more we can build those on-ramps uh, for people, the more we can make this an everyday experience throughout every level of society and culture, the stronger our culture is going to be at working for um, social change. Big thank you to your teacher for doing that. Um, it seems like another possible on-ramp to people opposing wars is people favoring peace. I mean, there are a lot of, there are millions of events and posters and every medium in existence that say, yay for peace, pro-peace. I mean, even the Pentagon is pro-peace, right? But at some point, some of them also become opposed to wars. Um, you'd think it just went without saying, we can try to decipher what it means to be pro-peace without being against wars, but are there events that are pro-peace that gradually bring people into also being anti-war? Let's hope all of them, right? Uh, I think this is what we, one of the things we sort of started talking about at the beginning of today is like we can't take them for granted anymore right uh that i think maybe four or five years ago i kind of had the attitude of like oh a little international day of peace rally what good will that do we got to go close down bases and now i i feel like we actually have to make sure people at least think peace is a good idea um, but if we're organizing for peace, if we're doing uh, something on the International Day of Peace, the very least that we can do is, you know, pray for people who are in direct war zones, right, to not avoid the controversy of places like that are actively experiencing war, Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, um, Somalia, Sudan, uh, the many places that we are at war around the world that never go acknowledged. Um, so to bring that up and to bring that in, don't make peace an abstract. Yeah. Make it a real tangible thing that we want to be a, tangibly and actively working for. And then you can build from there. I mean, you can talk about policies of reducing military budgets, closing bases, all sorts of things like that. Um, that really help us think to what does it mean to demilitarize our culture and to really establish a culture of peace and a society, society trained in active nonviolence. We have just a few minutes left. Rivera Sun, uh, I wanted to ask you about a culture of peace. I'd, I'd love to live in a place where peacemaking accomplishments were in textbooks and peace heroes had holidays and peace was celebrated the way, the way that wars and militarism are constantly celebrated, um, which seems a little bit odd at a moment when everybody, again, is going to be obsessing over a pair of presidential candidates, both of which want to fuel and 
fund and exacerbate and escalate militarism and 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 brutal wars around the world uh how important is it that we build a a culture that has peace history and peace lessons and peace symbols in it i think it's critically important i think when we lose sight of the robust reality of peace its potentiality it's the experiences of it that we've had through history the way we've won it back when the war culture has stolen it from us uh then we lose something incredibly important to our humanity right and and in this day and age i feel like uh, the united states is losing its humanity to these ongoing constant wars and um, we can all be a part of stealing that back or reclaiming it. It's not stealing, it's ours. Peace culture is ours to begin with. We can reclaim it through things like don't watch. Don't watch videos and movies that are shameless pains to war culture, right? Criticize them in, in your writings and social posts. If you read yet another book that is all about war, critique that when you go post your review on Amazon or Goodreads or whatever. You know, you know, you need to decouple your mind from the war culture and recognize how insidious it is. Um, you know, go take down the posters for the army recruiters at the local high school. Why should they get to recruit our children? Go put up a poster recruiting the children to the peace movement instead. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, if we want to have a future as humanity, the only future that's really worth having is a peaceful future on a living planet. And if we don't stand up for that right now, we're going to lose it. So now is the time. With just a minute or two left, Rivera, uh, remind people how they can get involved and where to find you and where to find campaign nonviolence. Yeah, you can Google campaignnonviolence.org and you'll find out all about the action days. And, um, you know, everyone is welcome to join in. So please tell your friends if you have people in other movements and campaigns, invite them to join us. Uh, you can be uh, the person who brings people to the party and we'd love to see you all. This is going to happen from uh, September 21st to October 2nd. And uh, we would love to see you on the ground, in the streets, and online. We have been speaking with the wonderful Rivera Sun, and her website is riverasun.com. Rivera, thanks very, very much for coming on Talk World Radio. Thank you so much, David. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.